Hello class and welcome to the chapter you've been waiting for because it's the last chapter which is chapter 17 managing communication. So communication is definitely something that's important for a manager. In today's complex business environment a lot of how well you can do business depends on how effective you are in communication. In fact they say that managers spend 80 percent of their day communicating. 48 minutes of every hour is spent either on the telephone, communicating online, talking informally, and so you're spending most of your time communicating. Communication permeates every management function, whether we're planning, leading, organizing, or controlling. So managers communication it should be purpose directed in that it directs everyone's attention towards the goals that we're trying to achieve. So here is a slide showing you how uh, important communication is being purpose directed. You'll see there directs attention to the values. Also, there are strategic uh, conversations and there are different methods. And we're going to talk about all those different methods and strategic communications also. So what is communication? A, a simple definition is communication is the process by which information is exchanged and understood by two or more people, usually with the intent to motivate or influence behavior. So it is a process. We are exchanging information, which could include data or feelings and so forth, but it needs to be understood by the other person for communication to take place. And usually we communicate to try to motivate or influence others, especially if we are a manager. So here is a model of communication. We formulate a message such as I'm formulating to you what I think communication is in this model. And I use a channel. In this case, I'm speaking and using a visual channel uh, to communicate. And then the, the message is being received by verbal. Now, you don't see any nonverbal symbols because we're not face to face. But if we could, you could look at my gestures and expressions and so forth then you are the receiver. You use your ears or your eyes to receive the message. You try to interpret the message and then you formulate feedback to me and I can see whether you got the message. Now, if I could see you, I could see that it actually happened, but you could also communicate back via email or telephone call or whatever. So that's the communication model. Now, in the all of those processes, there's potential for error or misunderstanding, especially if we have what we call noise. Noise is anything that impedes uh, the communication, any barrier to communication. It could be a sound, which is actual noise. It could be the fact you're tired, you're sleepy, or whatever. Anything that gets in the way. To communicate well, we should create a climate of trust and openness. Open communication and dialogue often encourage honesty. So this means we need to have good interpersonal skills, and that will foster openness, honesty, and trust, and enhance our communication. Using multiple channels increases the effectiveness of communication. So the structure that we create can affect how well we communicate. If I want to communicate with the president of the company, do I have to go through three different levels of managers to get to the president, or does the president have an open door policy, for example? So open communication means sharing all types of information throughout the organization. One way to do this is called a centralized network where team members communicate through one individual. So if you want to talk to any of these other persons outside of this circle, you have to go through the person that's in the middle of the circle. The other option is to use a decentralized network where individuals communicate freely, freely with other members, such as we see on the right, where everyone can speak to everyone else. Now, this gets more complicated, but it leads to greater flexibility. Communication channels. Uh, we talk about the richness of a channel, the amount of information communicated in an episode or one attempt to communicate. So if I send a memo, I can communicate, but you don't know if I'm serious or laughing or upset just by the memo. It's very difficult to see because you can't see my expressions, my tone of voice, and so forth, so it's not as rich. 
the capacity of an information channel is influenced by three characteristics. The, bindle, the ability to handle multiple cues simultaneously, the sound of my voice, the expression on my face, hand gestures, and so forth. The ability to facilitate rapid two-way feedback, that I can get feedback from you, and the ability to establish a personal focus for the communication. So if I send you a memo, it's hard for you to ask a question about that. If I'm talking to you on the phone, you can give me rapid feedback. And the ability to establish personal focus for the communication, can I personalize it just for you, or is it just a mass communication? One of my jokes of the day, Yogi Berra said, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> Okay, this is another corny joke. So this is showing channel richness uh, and their advantages and disadvantages. But if you look and you notice the telephone is higher in richness than like a memo or a letter or a report or a bulletin. You can't ask questions of a report on the telephone and say, wait a minute, I didn't understand what you meant. Almost as rich now are electronic messages like email, Twitter, uh, instant messaging, blogs, but that's you don't get as good as telephone. And of course, the richest of all is face-to-face -face communication. So electronic communication, which is used more and more today, is used for messages that we used to give face-to-face. But we should avoid using electronic communication in some situations. If you're angry, you might send off an email, and then you later regret that you did it. So don't do it when you're angry. When your message may be misunderstood, then it's maybe better to, to talk to the person one-on-one. -on -one. When you're counseling or apologizing, that need, definitely needs to be done face-to-face -face or over the telephone. And when you're rebuking or criticizing, that should probably be done face-to-face -to, -face to avoid misunderstanding. Selecting the appropriate channel for communication depends upon the, whether the message is routine or non-routine. Non-routine messages typically are ambiguous, concern novel events, and have great potential for misunderstanding. If you're getting ready to lay off 10% of the workforce, maybe it's better to have a mass meeting and explain why. Routine communications or messages convey information managers already agree on and understand, such as data or statistics. Here's our sales report for this week, for example. The channel can convey a symbolic meaning to the receiver. How important is it? So if I come and talk to you face to face, I think that's more important than if you just send a memo. So we said communication is often to persuade or influence others. So just issuing a directive sometimes is not effective. You need to persuade a person to obey the directive. So we want to persuade, we want to influence. To do that, we need to be credible. We need to uh, do what we say we're going to do and have integrity so people will trust us. We need uh, uh, good communication to persuade should build on goals and common ground. It should connect emotionally to the persons and how everybody's feeling. Are we feeling fearful? Are we feeling anxious? We need to connect to that and use multiple media to send important messages. In other words, if it's important, maybe I want to come and have a meeting and have a follow-up report, a follow-up memo, follow-up email, so people can think about it and then communicate back afterwards. They say that a lot of people have communication apprehension, the fear of communication. And that's certainly true. I've heard that people fear having to give a speech more than death. How about that? So some of us just don't want to communicate with others, and we're fearful to do that. And that's why using email and Twitter and instant messages and so forth is kind of neat, because we don't have to face the person. And it makes it a little bit easier to communicate. Communicating with candor. We want to be honest and frank. So that means we should have a confident, positive approach. For example, use I statements. Don't say, you really blew it with this customer. Say, I think that we have a problem the way you interacted with that customer. Stick to the facts rather than adjustments. I noticed the customer didn't make the purchase. Why is that? Rather than saying, well, you blew that cell. And be clear and specific and direct in your request. Don't say, do a better job next time. Say, next time, maybe you should show the quotation to the salesperson, to the customer. Maybe you should demonstrate the product. You should also ask a lot of questions to enhance communication. Asking questions builds trust, 
and openness between managers and employees, and it helps to build critical thinking skills. Questions stimulate the mind and give people a chance to make a difference. Listening is one of the most important parts of communication, maybe the most important part. Listening is the skill of grasping both facts and feedings to interpret a message's meaning. Listening to employees and customers is vitally important to the success of any business or any manager. Information in organization flows from the bottom up from the, what the customers say or the person that has direct contact with the customers can tell us what's going on the best. And managers today know the importance of feedback, so we want feedback. We want people to tell us how things are going. So here are 10 key if, keys to effective listening. This is in the book, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. The first one is to listen actively. A good listener nods, asks questions, paraphrases what's said. Keep an open mind. Look for opportunities and new ways to learn. Resist distractions. It's awful hard to not let your mind wander. Capitalize on the fact that thought is faster than speech. So if I pause in between, you will daydream. So try to anticipate, summarize, and listen to the tone of voice. Seek understanding. Seek some common ground and new understanding. Judge content, not delivery. If a certain person uses bad grammar, doesn't mean that they're stupid, for example. Hold one's fire. Do not judge or respond until you understand the other person's point of view. Listen for ideas or central themes. Work at listening. It uh, work, works hard. Exhibits active body state, eye contact. A good listener does all that. And 10 shows respect. A good listener learns to keep quiet and let the other person do most of the talking. Oh, here's where listening and communication is important in marriage. And as cartoon says, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Side effects may include headaches, weight gain, irritability, depression, tantrums. Oh, I sure hope that's not the case when you get married. I've been happily married for almost 52 years now. Nonverbal communication. This is when the message is sent through human actions and behaviors, not necessarily the words. This includes what we call body language, facial expressions, gestures, touch, the use of space, how close we are to someone. This can express enthusiasm, warmth, confidence, arrogance, indifference, and displeasure. So here's a short video from friends about uh, nonverbal communication. I'm pregnant. <laughs> and you're the father, by the way, but you got <laughs> No, I could get him to forgive us. I don't know. I'm telling you. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Oh. <laughs> it's like you're always stuck in second gear. It was like this crazy-eyed, hairy beast man. It was like a like a Bigfoot or a Yeti or something. <laughs> Hi, uh, just so you know, we we didn't mean to fog you. We we actually thought you were like a Yeti or something. <laughs> Hi. So you like the short hair better? What? Yeti? I'm Danny? <laughs> well, it hasn't been your day, week, your month, or even your year, but... Thieves? <laughs> Hello? then I'm happy for you. I'm fine. Really? Absolutely. I'm fine. <laughs> totally fine. I, I don't know why it's coming out.
out all loud and squeaky, because really, I'm fine. I'll be there for you. Joe? <laughs> well, I guess Joey went home. Oh, and look, there is still one box that I have to unpack. <laughs> oh, my God. You almost gave me a heart attack. Oh, still in bed at 10, working at 8. I, I cannot believe this. Oh, sorry, but it, it's true. I, I love him too. My best friend. And my sister. I cannot believe this. You burned your breakfast so far. Things are going great. Aside the fact that you accidentally picked up my grandmother's ring and you accidentally proposed to Rachel. When people do this, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I'm sorry. When it hasn't been your day, you read the most. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Here are some nonverbal communications, the lowered steeple and the raised steeple. This is supposed to communicate uh, confidence in what you're saying, for example. What about this one, the mouth guard? You put your hands to your mouth and maybe your eyes get wider. What does that mean? Experts say that's to suppress the deceitful words or maybe surprise. Notice these two people on the left and on the right. On the lady on the left it has a closed attitude. She doesn't accept what you're saying. Don't get in my space. On the right, it's more open attitude. Let me tell you what I think. The thumb gesture. The gentleman on the left, according to experts, has a negative or superior attitude, where the young lady on the right has a dominant or aggressive attitude. What about these people? Guy looks like he's scratching his mustache or something, uh, the, or putting your hand behind your head or rubbing your eye. I've caught you telling a lie. Oh, yeah, you caught me. Sometimes it may indicate you're just thinking hard. The collar pull. Does that mean you're hot or your tie's too tight? Maybe, but it also indicates anger or frustration. What about these? Are they bored? Or are they thinking hard? Evaluation? Let me think about that, the guy's left says. The guy on the right says, I'm really bored by this lecture. What about this guy? He has his arms crossed like that. That's a defensive or negative attitude. What about this? Partial arm cross barrier gesture. What does that mean? Lacking in self-confidence. What about this? Is she lacking self-confidence? I don't think so. Readiness. Readiness, which in the right context is correct, but the basic meaning is aggression. And what about these two people? What do you think they're doing? Intimacy. Signals for privacy. They're flirting with each other. You should go somewhere else and leave them alone. What about this guy? He looks kind of bored. Shows nervous reserved or defensive attitude. The four-leg lock position. This is a sign of being tough-minded or stubborn individual. 
and this guy. I really like this outfit, by the way. Indicates pride of ownership. And this lady with her feet propped up on the desk. Ownership gesture reflects easygoing, relaxed, and carefree attitude. So, workplace communication, the three elements in the workplace and communication. One is using social media to improve internal and external communication. Now we have social media to augment other ways of communicating. Using informal in, uh, or more personal communication channels, we should not rule out going and actually talking to the person. And three, we need to establish formal communication channels so people, if they have a grievance or an idea, they know how they can get that to the right place. Another cartoon. I'm never having kids. I hear they take nine months to download. <laughs> okay. Social media. Social media is a group of internet-based applications that allow creation and exchange of user-generated content. You're all familiar with Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. Wikis, blocks, microblogs, content communities, social networking sites, virtual worlds. It also is important to listen to customers on social media and what they're saying to you or about you. And it's a way we can communicate with customers. And we can engage employees via social media. Personal communication channels may exist with formal channels. Personal communication network is personal networking across organizational boundaries. You may uh, communicate with someone in another department, for example. We have something in organizations called the grapevine or gossip. People can be valuable. This can be a valuable tool for managers. It links people across the organization. You want to try out a new idea. You just tell your uh, assistant you're thinking about this idea. Your assistant tells it during uh, coffee break to somebody else during lunch. And by the end of the day, your assistant comes back and tells you whether it's a good idea or not. And you can say, well, everybody thinks it's a bad idea. I'm not going to do it anyway. Maybe they think it's a good idea. Well, now I, I know this because I use the grapevine effectively. The grapevine actually is usually accurate and usually is, is dealing with items that are business related. Written communication is a key skill with the growth of email and collaboration. You have to be able to, to write effectively. So here are some tips for writing skills. One, respect the reader. Sometimes people uh, try to put too much in the written word, make it too long. It's single space, 12 page document. Who wants to read that? Provide an executive summary. Use headings to guide the leader through it. Know your point and get to it. And write clearly rather than impressively. Make your words clear. Don't try to use big words to impress that people won't understand. And get a second opinion before you actually publish what you've written or send it off. So this shows you how communication can be really complicated within an organization. So we can have upward communication which is from the bottom down where people can talk about problems or suggestions or performance reports or disputes or grievances, financial information for accounting. That goes from the bottom towards the top of the organization. You can have downward communication from top management down through the different levels to the uh, employees to implement goals, to give job instructions for procedures, practices, performance, feedback, and indoctrination. But you can also have horizontal communication between departments or within a department uh, for changes, initiatives, and improvements. Crisis communication can be very important when there's a communication that uh, there's a crisis going on, management skills for dealing with a crisis, and as we're dealing with the coronavirus crisis, you might ask yourself, are our leaders doing this well? Stay calm and listen hard, be visible, get the awful truth out, tell people the truth, just get it out there, communicate with a vision for the future. Konyets, which is Russian for that's the end, I bet you're glad this is over. Remember to do the mind tap assignment for chapter 17, do the case for chapter 17, and participate in the online discussion for chapter 17. Thank you.